Hello everyone and welcome to this short video where I give you seven of the most important reasons I believe that people's photographs when they, they're on holiday or they, they're, they're doing some tourism or they just go into the streets of their hometown hoping to take some nice photographs, why they are just not as good as they want them to be. Or as the Americans would say, why they suck, which is an expression I'm getting uh, more and more fond of. So it's true that a lot of people's photographs do suck and uh, for the best possible reasons, because they've never trained, they've never studied, or they've simply never been told either how to take a good photograph or why the photographs they're taking aren't so good. So that's what I'd like to do now very quickly. I'm not going to give you solutions because that's in a second video. So let's have a look at this one. My, my number one reason is that the photographs are boring or cliched. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the easiest way to take a cliched photo is to take a photograph of something that's been photographed a million or a billion times before, like the Eiffel Tower. Here it is. It's, uh, it's a classic monument, that's for sure, but the photograph is unbelievably boring. Um, there's no other way to put it. And I won't, I won't even tell you why. I'm just going to give you the reasons now. Okay. Remember all the whys and so on are in my second video, but, uh, compare that with this one that I've taken. Uh, it's the same subject as you can see, but it's what I would call a more, um, <laughs> interesting, not so boring and not so cliched, uh, shot of a very, very famous monument. Okay. My second, uh, reason is that there's no subject. Let's have a look at this. Wow. Hey, <laughs> it is actually a famous Paris park. Well, one of them, but um, it's a little bit difficult to know what's going on. It's a bunch of grass and green and a bit of sand maybe, or is that water? Oh, I don't know. Honestly, I haven't got a clue. Uh, I've really got no idea what it is at all. And certainly I have no idea what the subject is supposed to be unless it's just this massive green stuff. So not the most exciting picture of what is probably a very beautiful park. Let me give you this picture in contrast. Remember this point is that there's no subject and there you would definitely say there is a subject. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? He's totally filling the frame uh, and so on. Right. Number three reason is that it's poorly composed. Right. Uh, now I had an example of that. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. What do I mean by poorly composed? Well, pff, it's a bit difficult to know what's going on. I mean, there's a big load of white stuff here that takes up this bottom quarter of the picture and uh, the eyes led straight to the middle, but there's nothing really happening. And um, really the composition is just not there. I don't know what the composition is supposed to be. If I compare that to a shot where I tried hard to make it nicely composed, uh, this one here, um, you can see the difference. I hope um, I've, got this doorway here, which is within the frame itself. This angle goes out that way. The drain pipe counters it that way. There's a subject about a third of the way in. There's brightness here. There's the plain wall on that side. So it's not the same sort of thing. So poor composition is, uh, is my third sin. Technically challenged is my fourth. Fourth reason people's photos suck, technically challenged. In other words, uh, they're blurry, they're too light, they're too dark and so on. Here's a picture in the metro and theoretically it could be okay, but uh, it's just blurry and uh, that doesn't help the photograph at all. Let me show you a picture. There's a bit of blur here. This is one of mine. The guy is a bit blurred. He could be, have been a bit more blurred because that shows movement and the couple on the bench are sharp. So, you know, blurriness is okay, but as long as you mean it to be blurred. Right. Where are we? Uh, sin number five, no story. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, there's nothing going on. Uh, um, well, I mean, here there is kind of, maybe I, I need to show you a, a different one here. What about this? I think that's the one I had in mind. There's literally, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no interaction. There's no, um, no contrast. There's no things which are big next to things which are small. There's no um, brightness next to darkness. There's no 
happy person next to a sad one or an old person next to a new one uh, sorry an old person next to a, a young one or a rich person next to a poor one or a fuzzy person next to a you know, sharp one you know the list goes on and on and on there just isn't anything it's just a straightforward snapshot uh, if I could compare that to something like this there is definitely a story there um, there's old and there's young old and young there's poor and not so poor and there's an interaction between them. Okay, uh, my sixth sin is no humour. Uh, I haven't really got an example of that, but um, you can imagine pictures which aren't particularly funny, you know, nothing nothing particularly amusing going on. Uh, most tourist snapshots are like that. And you've got to watch out for it, but if you do, then there's tons of it. I mean, here's one of mine, just from the other day. It's uh, a chicken crossing the road <laughs> with, uh, with the opera in the background. Um, I mean, I won't tell you why it's funny or if, if it tell you that it is funny, if you don't think it is. But, you know, you can see what I'm getting at, can't you? At least there's something unusual going on there. And uh, you've got to look for that. And the final one is just no originality or, or personality whatsoever in the photograph. Uh, I think this one was an example of that. And uh, perhaps, perhaps this one too. Um, I mean, they've taken a shot which they probably thought was interesting because there's animals in it, aren't there? Uh, and yet, what have they added to it? They've literally lifted their camera to eye level and snapped. Maybe they tried to get the Arc de Triomphe in the background. I don't know. But, you know, what are these people doing? They're, this thing is coming in halfway down and uh, there's, there's nothing... Um, which tells me, you know, the person has really made an effort to inject their own personality um, or take an original shot of any type whatsoever. Uh, whereas here, for example, it's a picture of a drain cover, which not everybody takes pictures of. So there's something a bit original in the first place, you know, to start off with. And it looks a bit like a face, too. And then I've put this circle effect on it, you know, just doing anything to make it different. And um, oh, here's here's one more example. Um, the bird um, mimicking if you like, the steps of the woman. So, you know, something there which is over and above the normal and the, the effort has been made to do that. So there are my seven cardinal sins that I, that I thought of in a little half hour brainstorm of why people's photos often suck or are simply not as good as they themselves would like them to be. And in my next video, I'll give you a few ideas on, on how to to get around that. Uh, again, they were that they're boring or cliched. There's no subject whatsoever. They're poorly composed, technically challenged. There's no story as such. There's uh, they're very lacking in humour, and there's no originality or, or personality of the photographer themselves. So thanks for watching. As I said in the next video, I'll give you more examples of photographs which hopefully don't um, fall foul of those those uh, cardinal sins of street photography. Thanks for watching and see you shortly. Bye-bye.